Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Oh you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. John Frederick Coots and Haven Gillespie, 1934. Sometimes, I feel like a commoner, in an uncommon world. Actually, if I think about it, that is pretty much who I am. I do not have a PhD. I'm self-taught in many things. I am no expert. Details tend to annoy me outrageously. Well, I'm an expert on two things, both of which are no longer relevant, and therefore leave me pretty much stranded in whatever takes my fancy in terms of things to know. And I'm too damn old to develop expertise in anything anymore, particularly because it might mean I did have to have an opinion, and I'm definitely far far too old for that. And the world is uncommon now. It is a weird bloody place. That's what it is, if you spend any time looking at it, which I don't recommend. And it was this thought that being a commoner, makes me more adept than perhaps some, at translating into human speak all this nonsense jargon jilly jab gobbledygook we run into, trying to understand some topics from governments and bureaucracies and people running the world. So, with that in mind, I wandered off to look at the globalists' agenda for water. In this case, on the WEF website. The first few sentences just left me tired. Or sleepy. Maybe both. So, I looked at the pictures. There's writing inside a big circle surrounded by little circles, and each of these little circles have other circles around them, and if you click on one of the little circles, it will provide you with lines going off to various circles of all sorts of sizes in different colors. And I thought, they are going around in circles. And then I started thinking. They have no plan B. They really don't. They have charts and figures and plots and planning and sustainable distrainable untrainable goals and ambitions and visions and work for bureaucrats and all sorts of statistics and facts and figures and futures and no plan B. There's no doubt they've worked very hard at it, don't get me wrong there. Obviously, it must have taken a whole lot of people for at least a lifetime to get to this point, but still, there needs to be a plan B. You can't just stop at the point where you've destroyed everything on the world to build it back better, and then realize it is all not going to work. What if herds of armadillos and crickets started eating all the water pipes because it tasted like licorice? What if you needed oil and gas to run a helicopter to clear off the windmills during an ice storm? What if you needed to fight wars over lithium instead of oil? What if water was the cause of global warming all along? What if Klaus Schwab is actually AI and was more a comedian than an unelected world leader? What if the people hate your plans? Absolutely hate them? It is one giant plan. It is this or nothing. It is a beehive of people who like to draw circles and squares and lines, but who have quite forgotten that it ain't no beehive without a queen bee, and the queen bee, fed up with all the buzzing, has gone off to Costa Rica for a glass of guaro on a beach. The queen bee in this case, would be the actual people who will be living the reality of all this activity. The people. They seem to have completely forgotten us. Again. They really have. We have no circle in their chart. Not a one. And the truth is, we aren't all sitting on a beach in Costa Rica. We might even be sitting on the streets, wondering about what to eat that day if at all. Which reminded me of the Holocaust. And the bureaucrats. The only reason we know so much about the Holocaust is because of the copious amount of records that were kept. The detailed clerical mundanery, which is not a word, of evil. A rent's banality of evil. And all over the world, carefully placed hordes and herds and havens of bureaucrats are carefully following the script. Without a plan B. 
without questioning. Without a thought in their head about what it all means. Without understanding that a chip implanted in the hand is a tattooed number on an arm. Without looking at premises. Without a variety of opinions compared. This made me think about the tree at the foot of my property. It is covered in the snow that fell, and there has been a bit of rain on top, and so we see a sketchy tracery of limbs against a white sky. In the right light, it glitters. There, under the snow, roots as big as the tree itself are anchored there. How strong that tree is. The grass roots. That was what it reminded me of, because my brain does things like that. That is why grassroots movements are significantly stronger and more resilient than what we're experiencing with the globalists right now. A tree built from the top down, has no roots. It will flutter and fail in the slightest breeze. Now, it doesn't matter what you believe about the globalists and their agenda. It doesn't matter if you have a portrait bust of Schwab on your mantle all polished and shiny, or if you have decided that the globalists are evil conniving authoritarians out for profit and control. Or even if you don't think of them at all. No belief matters at the end of the day, because a simple look at the globalist agenda tells you one thing only. None of these globalist objectives could be reached in a free democratic society of informed individuals. None of them. And so, no matter what you think, those things, freedom, democracy, justice, history, individual choice, religion, peace, are under attack. The entire script at the moment is to destroy these things. That is what it is all about right now. And it is mostly being done by divide and conquer. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. So, if you believe in the globalist goals, you must simultaneously accept that those things are going, going, gone. So, do not speak of it lightly. At least recognize, this was the price that was asked. And you have paid for it, either knowingly or unknowingly. Say a prayer in mourning for the lost. Try not to think about how there might have been a better way. Evil comes from a failure to think. It defies thought for as soon as thought tries to engage itself with evil, and examine the premises and principles from which it originates, it is frustrated because it finds nothing there. That is the banality of evil. Hannah Rent. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable, and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.